Wow. I really hope they get something that will be motivation and inspiration for them to, in their everyday lives, be able to apply it so that they can feel dreams. If they may be going through a tough time, they can realize that, you know, that's only a, a moment in life. So I really I want them to walk away feeling like they can achieve whatever they really want to achieve in their life and to find that voice within them and, and use that voice to, for, you know, for their higher purpose. Don't forget, they're right there. So tonight, um, you're talking about Hip Hop the Fed Con Society. And I just wanted to know how you feel that the voice and message of hip hop has changed from the 80s and 90s to today. Well, hip hop in the 80s, you know, when hip hop started in the late 70s, hip hop in the 80s was so new and pure. It's like it's almost like you, you know, a child. Right? It, it all it knows is to love and to be creative and to be pure and you know express its truth. And that's what hip hop had it, that's the elements that it had and the qualities that it had in the 80s. Do you think that's still present in today's music? No, um, not overall. I believe that, you know, as it's just like I equivalent it to a human being because we can relate to this. As we grow older, we start losing some of those pure qualities and start focusing on the problems of the world and then, you know, trying to reach certain goals that we might have set that, you know, that may not even be for the, the betterment of our spirit or our soul, but may just be to make a living, and that's understandable. Right. So I think hip-hop has been going through that phase to a certain extent, too, with it still having, with it still having its aspects of creativity and things in it. But I also think because it, it has become so focused on the business end of it that it's ta it, that has taken away some of the the pure creativity and, the, and sincerity and innocence that, that once existed in it. And that song I used to love is exactly what I was, that's what I was yeah. talking about right there. The, like the innocence of it. Right. Yeah. Now that you brought that up, um, I know you wrote about that song and you're expressing your worries of how the hip hop game was changing and what direction it was going <coughs> to. Do you feel as though, do you still have those concerns today or? Well, mm -hmm. I feel I feel like now it's like I had the concerns, but I'm. I feel like the way to express it is to leave my hip hop music. I feel like I might have give some more jabs at a certain point. Now it's time for me to show and prove what do I want to hear. You know, because eventually it's like, what, what am I doing complaining about the system if I ain't gonna change it? So my change is coming through making music that is quality that is accessible but 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 pure to the essence of hip hop. Where would you like to see hip hop in the future? Well excuse me, I definitely would like to see it continue to be global and be globally recognized and have a global influence. But along with that, I would like to see Diverse groups of artists, artists that, that talk about health issues, talk about social issues, talk about partying, talk about um, MCs, talk about whatever's going on in the world in their mind, using their, their most creative, like, you know, songs. There were songs that would come up where, like, their president talk about mind sex. Or, you know, for that matter, Kanye would talk about being at the hospital with roses where his grandma was dying. You know, those are subject matters that, you know, you don't always, you don't hear yeah, people can relate to, and it's like, it's not saying something because you think everybody is, is doing that. It's right. a popular thing, so I'm gonna say it so, so everybody will like me. It's like, it's more like, man, this is what I just experienced. I'm gonna tell y'all what it is. And, you know, I hope you relate to that. I hope you do, but this is my experience. Yeah, it's an inspirational tool. For, for a lot of people, so it, we need to keep that energy in it at times, you know. Okay, my last question. Um, in reference to hip-hop, are you still in love with her? Yeah, 
I love that bottle. Um, excuse me. I have to eat, but I was, I was working, I've been working on my new album, and it made me understand how much I in love I am with hip hop. You know, I, I love making music and rapping. And I love what music brings to my life, and I love like it's like really a one of the best feelings in the world when I'm writing some raps that I feel are really fresh. You know what I mean? So I really do love hip hop, and, and I enjoy listening to quality hip hop. Um, One of my favorite MCs of all time is Nas. I listen to Lil Wayne. I like Drake. I like Mo Steph. Those are the major cats that I would listen to. Like, like those are the. I would say those are the last albums that I've purchased. I mean, I, I, I listen to Walk the Flock at a party and definitely, you know, but. I, you know, but I'm talking about the music that I play in my, in my car when I, ride. When I play music, I, that's the hip hop I play. Yeah. Thank you. Who you listen to? Um, I listen to you. Okay. I enjoy Kanye a lot. Um, Tell us probably, uh, recently, my little sister from Young and Sister, we're 20, 12 years old, and she's like, listen to Karis One. I'm like, girl, who is that? <laughs> so I like, she put you on that? Yes, that's that. <laughs>
talking about today, I would love to work with him. And with J. Cole, just, for me, anybody I work with, it's like, I, I work with them because the song, they feel like, it feel, when I create the song, it feels like it's a song that would, oh man, I can hear something such on that, you know? And I don't limit the artists, but I mean, you, you certain songs that sound like it's in their vein, you know? Or they ask me to hop on something, I'll hop on it. Which artists would you love to collaborate with? Most, right now. Probably Trey 3000. Um, yeah, Trey 3000 or, or Eminem, Jay Z. Like as far as hip hop artists, Sade, Sade, Sade would be somebody I would like to, or Radiohead would be an artist that I would just like to collaborate with too. Or maybe Like You Lee. Like You Lee. It's a singer that's she kind of like, from, I think she's from Sweden. She got a nice little sound. Yeah, it's kind of similar. It's, but uh, she got her own little voice, but it's definitely an alternative sound. I mean, I just really approached it with a, with a passion for it because I really love it. And just started working at it and, and humbly going in saying, hey, want me to sign a list? I'm going to sign a list, go in there and do my thing. Got turned down, took, took those, you know, those um, disappointments and just started getting better. Took it to fuel like, man, I got to keep it better. You Last know? question.
live in that particular area or don't, you got to come in with ideas, support, um, programs to, to help nurture the children. And they also want, they want opportunities from, from what I assess from the children. They want opportunities to, to do, to be active and do things that are productive in life. You know, like, I talked to some kids, it was years ago, but I talked to them, some kids that were in, in the, um, on the south side of Chicago, this area called Inglewood, which is really a tough neighborhood. And they, and the kids was just like, man, we just want to have some, something to do out of school, so we ain't hanging out game banging and stuff. And these was little, you know, little guys that probably been game banging, but they like, they really say, man, we don't want to be doing this. Like, so the, they need programs and things to do. And that's why I think it's helpful if we can help them to to find what they're interested in and, and find programs that, where they can go, let that be an outlet, whether it be sport, whether it be gymnastics, whether it be, you know, dance, whether it's writing, it could be like photography, you know, we need to like open them up to, to having, you know, sharing their own hobbies and, and their desires and, and helping them to develop that. I feel wonderful. Great. Great. Nice. I don't want to take up the time, but um, off the very top of your head, uh, what would you say is the most positive effect that hip hop has had on you and the most negative? On you? Is yeah. that on me or you? No, on you. Like uh, um, community, young I think people. you get, I think it's giving us an outlet. Young people is giving young people an outlet to to really express themselves and, and to be themselves. And I think I think the negative aspect is that some of the, the I think it's also provided a crutch where everybody wants to do it and they like don't necessarily have the, the, the passion for the art. So it just becomes like, okay, I'm doing it for business, but but any art gotta have some love put into it for it to really come out at its highest level. Because art is a divine thing, you know? And it can't be always money inspired. I got a question for you. I'm yes, Bill sir. King, I'm Chief of Police here, so yeah. I'm really pleased to have you here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, as far as hip hop and us older people, do you think there's ever been a time, or do you think there'll ever be a time where the older generation connects better with uh, with hip hop, uh, Eric Dyson was in uh, a couple years ago, and he ran through a bunch of things about hip hop, and and a lot of older people were in the audience when he started talking about it, and it, it was just really interesting to see the reaction of older people and, and kind of the negative image that's there from from an older generation about hip hop. Do you think that'll ever change? Um, I think you know it will have. I believe older generations may see flashes of, of positivity, positivity in hip hop and, and artists that they may relate to in, in certain ways, like because of the fact that that artist carries themselves and carries themselves in a very professional or you know a conscious way. So older people will be like, okay, because older people, will, you know, because of the experiences that usually the older people come from, the generation they come from. Things need substance. Things need some value or something that, that that has meaning to it. So, when when music or or hip hop artists get recognized that do have meaning and do have that that substance, older people will relate to it. But I could find, you know, sometimes my mother will be like, "Such such is good," like yeah. you know, like and, and, I mean, and, it, and it's not all the obviously she's more in tune with hip hop because her son is a hip hop artist, but. It, it has been artists that have reached her, and some of them just had that that soul, like that appeal. You know, certain people just got souls that appeal to different generations, no matter what. And I think some of like she didn't know who Nas was at the time, and she was like, "Man, I like that Nas, man. He's good. You know, he's good." Like it worked. And actually, Rakim had come out. This was years ago. Rakim had come out with a record. Eric, Eric and Rakim. And she didn't know that they were from the older generation of hip hop. 
She was like, man, it's the one rapper around Kim that's good. I mean, she didn't even pronounce his name right. <laughs> she knew he was good. So that means, I, that mean, I'm just basically saying that, that that it is some artists that will come, that will translate to older generations and will have a message. It's just a matter of those artists really getting to the forefront of hip hop and really being publicized and being out there.